And that's the of the press. Thank you for being a part of it. This is the program, again, where we'll take a look at the national dailies within the breakfast and try to make sense of it. And to do so with me this morning, I'll be joined by uh, Ifi Oji, who's a policy analyst virtually. Good to have you, Ifi. Good morning. Good morning, Amaka. Good morning. And then we also have uh, economist and, of course, public affairs analyst, Bolahon Olojide, on the other end, joining us as well. Good to have you, Mr. Olojide. Uh, good morning, nice to be here. Yes, so we're going to begin this morning with uh, the Punch newspaper. We have a couple of papers to be reviewed, but we'll start with the Punch. And it will be displayed. Thank you to our production guys for already displaying that. So it says IOC's taxes down by 16.46 billion naira amid production cuts on page 23. Don't ambush Nigerians. Drop water bill, NLC tells National Assembly. Uh, that's the really hot conversa conversation still ongoing. It's on page two. Contractors picket finance ministry over 18 billion naira debt. 18 billion on page 24. APC has lost polls due to unnecessary infighting, according to Mr. President on page 19. APC celebrates um, as Supreme Court upholds Bello's election, Yahya Bello, I believe, of Kogi State, on page 10. 2023 presidency, no zoning in APC constitution, says Kalu, page 18. And the big story for the Punch newspaper, reopening varsity is now suicidal, social distancing impossible, according to ASU. The story is on pages 2 and 7. I wonder if you all agree with that, what is going on in the marketplaces, if you ask? Um, school resumption, learn from COVID-19 spike in US, Germany, PTF tells the state's decision on next phase of lockdown to be announced on Thursday, uh, according to the task force as well. We have picture story there of fan workers threaten strike, reject Abuja airport, others uh, concession on page 23. Uh, the picture story is also there. As you can see, 15-year-old Arabic student defiled by a man, 20, raped by Ogun Cleric. What's going on with the men of the robe? I'm sorry, just checking. Pages 4 and 5, that story is there. Unilag um, visitation panel in closed-door session receives 21 memoranda on page 21, I believe, or 28, as the case may be. Two commissioners dropped as fire may reshuffles cabinet also. Uh, Adeboye declines interview after Villa closed door meeting with Buhari. Okay. Drama as man and family disrupts Lagos wedding. Uh, say bride already married. Interesting. How did that happen? Things really happen in this Lagos. Oh. On pages four and five as well, you find that story for yourself. And lastly, Oshun reopens schools September the 21st and releases guidelines already on page 10. Let the conversation begin. Ify, let's begin with you. Which story is catching your attention this morning? Uh, I think it's just one of those things. Uh, let's look at the um, uh, uh, revenue from taxes, especially within the uh, oil and gas sector. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a surprise or it's no uh, surprise to anyone that there have been a lot of challenges in the, um, uh, that sector, the energy sector. I mean, they've had a lot of uh, problems, you know, even with the, uh, the efforts that have been made in trying to integrate uh, taxes within that sector, within the financial act last year, in post-COVID uh, realities have, has hit that particular sector uh, but, um, hard. And... Uh, surprised that if they're going to have production on the down and obviously income coming in will be down as well and they're having a, they're having a very investor shy uh, period at the moment because a lot of investors are looking at other other forms of investment that are more sustainable uh, from a global standpoint so you can imagine that uh, ECAs as any kind of impact investment is what most of the big big ticket investors are looking at 
So they are really suffering within the oil and gas sector. And this is a clear indication that this, um, this particular trend may be here to stay for a little while. Mm, right. Mm. Well, I can hear you. <laughs> All right, let's continue with you. What's your thoughts on any of the item on the punch news? Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the water bill. Uh, mm. I see that's one of the most important uh, issues to be discussed in the space today. It is the hottest, and, right? Uh, about I, I'll start by referring us to what is going on between Egypt and Ethiopia. Uh, Ethiopia is building a dam on the Nile. Right. And because of the implication, because of the water implication of that dam, Egypt said it is prepared to go to war with Ethiopia. That is to drive up the severity of issues of water. Water remains one of the most important resources of a nation. And it has to be properly managed. So whatever is going on with the water bill, should be of interest to every night. The discussion must be opened up to all stakeholders. Mm. We must have open sessions to discuss anything called water bill so that we understand exactly what is going on about that bill. It's not something that you want to pass behind the door at all. Mm. Discussion must be robust. Look at it. There is a decertification. The charge has dried up. There are migration issues from the Sahel, from the northeast part of Nigeria, downwards, because of water issues. Right. There are other farmer problems because of water issues. There is even hopeless digging of, 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 a, of, a, of a boreholes in places like Lagos and most part of Nigeria. All these are pointers toward the fact that we actually need a water management policy, a robust one. But it mustn't be something that is smuggled through the back door. We must have very serious and robust discussion to agree on the bill about water that will move us forward. Otherwise, we're going to be in serious crisis hmm. with the water bill. Yeah, I mean, well, I agree with you. We, we had, um, I think, three people having a conversation uh, this morning around water bill and say, you know, it's mm -hmm. about the hottest conversation now in Nigeria that we must be having. Um, no one should just sleep over it. It's important yeah. that we talk about it and right. know where this is headed and what's the motivation. I mean, the biggest questions that Nigerians are also asking is what's the motivation and why are we doing this? What, do, what does anyone stand to gain, actually? So thank you so very much for that intervention. Um, we will still be on the Punch newspaper. And I'll still see on you, uh, Bolan, who I'm wondering, if there's other conversation you want us to take up before we go to IFI, and in the interest of time, we, we, we just might be running through the papers very, very quickly uh, this morning. Uh, about NEC, I think there's something about NEC, okay? No, it's not, it's not in the form. No, not on the... Um, we can talk about yeah, the, uh, uh, the resumption of schools, universities. Mm. Um, well, I, I went to university for my first degree in Nigeria, and even way back, I left university in 1991. Even in 1991, Scotters were more than roommates. Whoa. And as a 1991, people were already having classes in the in the in the stadium. My university had a stadium. So you look at all those year one classes that were big, and they had to take them to the stadium. So we have a problem with uh, um, spacing in those universities, in the residences as well as in the classroom. So these are things we must pay attention to before we start opening these universities. Up. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Having said that, schools have resumed in Wuhan. I hope we all remember Wuhan. Mm -hmm. That's where it all started. <laughs> So if schools are presuming women, um, it's a challenge to all of us to know that it is not whether schools should resume. It's a matter of when should they resume, what do we need to put in place to make them resume. Very important. Mm -hmm. Safety measures. But for now, I'm not sure we are putting up in place to ensure that it's, we're not even sure that it's water in some of these universities. Mm. That's, that's, that's really worrying. How we approach it. Mm. 
All right. Uh, if you let's, let, let me hear your thoughts as well. Anything from the Punch newspaper? Um, I will just look at, um, you know, I mean, we've covered basically the idea of the, um, the production cost and the fact that taxes are done and revenue is done. But just to add to what um, uh, Mr. Bolano has said, I think it's, it's no, it's, he, he raises a very good point. Um, I think that at the end of the day, right, uh, yes, we can look to Wuhan as, as a potential uh, uh, outlook of what it could possibly be. That's where it ends. Wuhan took uh, deliberate action regarding uh, you know, quelling any issue that they were going to have with COVID. There were deliberate action, actionable um, targets that they met. Mm. So it's nice that we're looking at Wuhan and we're hoping that, okay, that is what we could be. But to get from one point from point A to point B, there is so much that has to be done to make that environment stable and for students, especially in Nigeria. He's very right. I mean, I, even though I didn't go to university in Nigeria, I went to university staff school of one of the bigger universities in Nigeria. And even at the time, it was always evident that there was overcrowding in most of the hostels and that a lot of these uh, living conditions that would be typically uh, not necessarily a challenge in other places were challenges that we're facing, realities that we're facing in Nigeria. And, um, I, and it, it would be it would more or less form a microcosm of what, what they would typically call community uh, observation for a disease like COVID. And we don't want to have that them as a... We really try to try to avoid that as much as possible. I think Mr. Balaham makes a very good point. Mm -hmm. All right, um, we will take our attention away from the Punch newspaper and turn it to the Nation newspaper in the interest of time. Like I said earlier, and it says extension of public works jobs likely. Says Kayamo. Uh, that's the reason. Page five, I believe. Yeah, page five of the Nation newspaper. And then aviation workers protest planned airports concession. Uh, five commissioners reassigned in AKT. Lots of students to resume in batches. Maybe that will solve the problem. I don't know. COVID-19 cases dropping due to low testing, says uh, presidential task force. And states fail to collect minimum samples. Federal government warns against hasty schools reopening. That story is on the front page. And it's continued uh, somewhere there in the nation newspaper. We also have um, why Senate is tracing 18 billion Naira NLNG dividends. Um, and budget 2021 uh, deficit likely to be 5 trillion Naira. Something, some information there. And then we have the breakdown of dividends of 2020, 2002, 2014, I believe. Uh, you find it if you grab a copy of the Nation newspaper and then you find uh, what we have in, we're talking about. So there's a picture story of um, Pastor Enoch Adeboye and um, the, the president. Well, we read in the news that he didn't grant interview after the closed door meeting. So maybe in the coming days, just maybe in the coming days, we'll know what that meeting was about. But for now, nothing. At the governorship, flying the trite APC will rig kite. Okay. Um, that's something there for you on the front page. And then lastly, public varsity is not ready to reopen, says Asu Oshun. Schools reopen September, and they have also given uh, the guideline. Um, I'm wondering, Walaha, what do you say about COVID-19 cases are dropping due to low testing and not necessarily what we thought that maybe we are winning the war against COVID? Just to get your um, thought there. It's, it's, it's quite unfortunate. Mm. Uh, but you see, in my observation, I was um, in, in a, one of the major cities in the Southwest a couple of weekends ago. Mm -hmm. And before I saw the first person that was wearing a mask, it probably took like two hours after I've been in that before I saw wow. the one person that was wearing a mask. And I can comfortably say that in that particular city, over 90% of the people mm -hmm. on the roads in the public places were not wearing a mask. Wow. The implication of that, or the message to me was that People seem to have moved on in mm -hmm. a way. They, 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 they got tired of the COVID thing. They wanted to move on with their life, and therefore they dropped all the guys. 
For us, for, I mean, for the decision makers, is a sign that we are in another phase of this campaign. So mm -hmm. we need a new strategy to connect with the people, to make them realize that um, COVID is still around. Otherwise, I foresee that we might have a second uh, 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 rise, second left rise in cases of COVID. If what I saw in that particular city is reflecting of what is going on in major cities in Nigeria, in which people have dropped their guts, they're not wearing masks anymore, they are tired of everything, they've moved on with life, essentially. So the issue, it has to not go beyond PTF addressing uh, uh, people on a daily basis. There is need for a change of strategy, a new strategy that connects more with the people so they know that COVID is still there. Hmm. COVID is still real. All right. If you let's hear your thoughts on the Nation newspaper, um, any item that you want to pick up there before we move on also? Um, I just wanted to look at um, just the idea of um, why there's so much focus on the aviation ministry. And I know that there's been, there's a, yesterday, I think there was meant to be a strike and uh, it hasn't formally been formally addressed by uh, Alaj Erika um, or, or the issue of the, the strike and why the concession means and all of that. I know that Nigeria is not the only country going through an aviation um, crisis at the moment, an aviation industry crisis, mm. and even in Ghana as well. They're having a major issue in terms of taxation and uh, how they're going to address it. And I know that the focus has be is, is becoming more intense in these sort of uh, sectors just because of how bad our economies are at the moment and what the, and what that mean, what that, um, what the aviation uh, sector means for our, uh, to, um, to um, expedite uh, recovery from an uh, economic recovery and and how that will move forward trade and how that will move forward um, all of us um, having a, a more robust economy. So I don't know I don't know what uh, the, the ministry the minister or ministry plans to do. I just know that they need they have to some form of a um, resolution on the issues uh, regarding the, um, the that sector. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Mr. Lodge, I'll stay again hand over to you. Uh, still on the Nation newspaper, a couple of items still there. You want to take one before we move on? Um, I, I, I would like to talk about standard tracing, uh, tracing of dividends. Mm -hmm. um, that is like dollars. trying to kill the symptoms and not the disease. The first question is, why were those dividends, why are we tracing them all the way from 2001 and 2020 or hmm. whichever period they said they are tracing them from? You're right. What happened? Why are we just picking it up? It is essentially because this is not what we should be chasing. They need to go and pass the PIB. Pass the PIB. A lot of these issues are going to be addressed by the PIB. And almost every Senate has probed NMPC. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, NMPC is not remitting what is supposed to get into the consolidated revenue account of the government. Okay, they are not remitting it. And so what? So what have you been able to do since every Senate? Uh, probes this NMPC. Hmm. The reason that lacuna was there resides in the law and the act that set up the NMPC. So unless we fix the act, because the act says NMPC can spend money for his own operations and then remit the balance to him. So why are you asking NMPC why it is spending money when the law says it can spend it and give you give you the change? Hmm. So Rather than chasing the symptoms, the Senate should go and cure the illness itself. Right. Go and pass the BIB and stop chasing shadows. Good. All right, let's 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 move away from that. Uh, <laughs> I like the way you put it. That's why I'm laughing. We're going to take uh, the Guardian newspaper now. I can see that time is not even on our side this morning. I can't explain why. Uh, we'll take the Guardian newspaper, and it says, Debate rages as government's eye excess digital profits. Um, that's on the front page there. Uh, school resumption raises fresh concerns. MND's uh, claim 5.75 trillion tax payment since 2001. Sector decries impacts of 39 taxes and levies. SS profit already taxed, says FIRS, and upward review will turn off investors, uh, economists insist. I'm wondering if we still have um, really investors interested with all that is going on in terms of insecurity in our country. 
And we have a picture story there of, um, I think that's Gowon. Uh, the picture, it's not, it's hard for me to say who's the next person, I apologize. Anyways, well, there's a picture story there. And the Supreme Court dismisses PDP and Wada's appeal, returns Bello as Kogi State Governor. That story is on page three. And the PTF rolls out COVID-19 protocols for airline passengers. Uh, aviation workers and LLC protest against planned concession of airports. Uh, that's the reason on page four. And then we have the COVID updates. Uh, again, just to let you know, uh, you know, Nigeria, it's now 54,008. I don't know how many more people believe those figures anyways, but yeah, that's what it is. And then 41,638 recovered and 1,013 people uh, have died from COVID-19. Uh, if you, let me see, is that... One item you want to take a look at on the Guardian newspaper. I'm wondering if they... Well, I'm just going to... Yeah, Sorry, go, go on. Sorry, go on, Amaka. <laughs> it's okay. You can go ahead. I was just going to say, are we not tired of listening to the protocols? Are they, you know, in terms of COVID-19? But just go on with your thoughts. Maybe that's well, just... I mean, yeah, just following what you're your thought, picking up from your thoughts on, uh, you know, the protocols and just looking at the different economic recovery plan and obviously the power sector recovery plan as well, where... There's a financial uh, plan committed to funding the revenue gap arising from the difference in the, between the cost tariffs uh, from the commission and end users. And I, I think we've talked about the power sector a lot. And I know that this is a big, big step from, um, from them. If, if, if what they are purporting to do actually becomes reality, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that, that's always the main issue. There's a huge gap or chasm between what uh, what they're able to um, what people what the different uh, companies the discos the transcos were all producing versus what the end user was receiving and in, and also from a tariff point of view that made sense or made, made it commercially viable for the different entity so um, if they're able to do this I know that it will be, it will be a turnaround in terms of investor confidence that because it's such a capital intensive uh, industry. And hopefully mm -hmm. that way we're able to secure at least one portion of our economy that won't be a problem. And then also moving on really quickly uh, to the idea of um, getting digital profits from Nigeria. We've had numerous examples in the last three, four years of, um, of a failure of, of a, a typical understanding from a policy point of view of how they're going to, uh, how a framework will look, look, look like in terms of collecting revenues from a digital uh, from all the companies from digital company. We all know that data is a new oil. I mean, Joe, just talking about the uh, uh, drop in revenues from the oil sector. So we know that this is the new uh, sexy, uh, and, and, and these are the new sexy entity. So we just want to make sure that Nigeria fully understands how they're going to go about this because they have other countries, even in Africa, have tried to find a way to uh, draw as much um, value from the digital sector, and it's always been a challenge. Yeah. Let's just see how it uh, pans out in the next couple of uh, months. Let's see how it pans out is right. All right, uh, Mr. Lojade, your thoughts on the Guardian newspaper before we call it a wrap? Okay, I'll, I'll just say um, a, a, a bit, you know, just to piggyback on what the uh, EPA has said uh, on, on the digital space. It, we, we have to be careful how we approach this. Number one, I saw something about the, the, the headline mentioned MNO and he spoke about taxes. Mm. The reality is that the big player, if you take the telephones, um, it is true that they are making additional, additional income from digital, uh, the digital space. But that income is being reported, so it's automatically part of the tax structure as it is right now for, those, for that sector. But you have also have other people who have migrated their businesses onto the online path. And there are digital plays everywhere. And those are the other players, those other players are the ones we probably need to pay more attention to. Then uh, there is the what you call the OTT over the top. These are people who are riding on the network. They have no business in Nigeria, but they are making money in Nigeria. So we have to also see how we can go after all of those people that are making money in Nigeria, but they have no business, no presence. Mm -hmm. And now we can tax them. So I, I feel, I just, sorry, sorry, Mr. Lodge, they continue. Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm done about that topic. Yeah, if you... Just to quickly say something, I just want to make a really quick point. I think for, for me that, yes, there's a clear record, um, there's a clear, clear record in terms of the uh, tel telcos, but the main, the meat of all of this is going to fall within the FinTech space as well. That space is under 
under util I mean the That's under wrong. tax, there's so much uh lack of a better word, there's a, such a cowboy mentality in that space. And it's actually affecting if average minimum wage earners that are looking for uh, microfinancing from these uh, entities. So that's actually where I think uh, most of the, the discussions seem to sort of center around, especially as a, as a lot of the, there's a lot, there seems to be a lot of, from a consumer point of view, a lot of complaints about the uh, microfinance sector, other, other tech startups. They're, everybody just seems to have a free reign in terms of just taking as, as much as they can and stripping from the economy as much as they can and from uh, the average Nigerian. So, so that is where I think if, if, if I were asked uh, to look into it as a, I mean, from a, from a consulting point of view, that is where I would then begin my, my um, yeah, my search. Okay, um, I want to say that um, this, like, that's why we're also going to call it a wrap this morning because time is fast spent. If you're a geopolicy analyst, thank you so very much for your thoughts. And economist and public affairs analyst, Bola Honolulu Jede Aso, thank you for your contributions. And to both of you, keep staying safe out there as COVID is still real. Thank you for having me. All right. All right, that's how we call it a wrap on Off the Press. We'll take it